Why can't we just live here? We could rent a booth, set up a little tent, survive on hot dogs and stale nachos. Because you die from a comic book overdose in like three hours. I'd die happy, and it'd be worth it. Ooh, I've been looking for those hardcovers. You can't buy everything, Mark Grayson. Watch me! Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast, and we are covering or continuing our coverage of Invincible Season 2, and we're on Episode 7, so this is a spoiler-full podcast as always, so if you haven't watched the uh, the episode, which I'm pretty sure you did, it came out Thursday, we're recording this on Monday the 1st, so April Fool's everybody. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! It's not about Invincible, we're actually covering The Walking Dead now. <laughs> oh god, yeah, we, we can talk about that later too, which is interesting. I haven't watched it yet, shush. Oh, well then we won't talk about that then. <laughs> <laughs> but... We're covering uh, Invincible Season 2, Episode 7, which is I'm Not Going Anywhere. That's what it's called, the episode. So, uh, the synopsis, Jamie? As Mark attempts to salvage his personal life, a new villain arrives, presenting Invincible with his greatest challenge yet. Donald grapples with his past. Which is funny because it's not just Donald that's grappling with his past. There's a yeah. couple other people, too, that are dealing with their own issues. We got Rex, uh, and we got uh, William. Well, his... Rick. William's boyfriend. Oh, it's Rick. I keep getting them backwards. I don't know why I shouldn't, because William's so interesting. But uh, He yeah. was. They nerfed him. <laughs> they nerfed him. But everybody has seems to have their own problems. Even uh, Amber and Mark have their own problems at this point during the episode itself, which sucks. And I'm just, you know, floored. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just wild. So, uh, yeah, this, this really hit hard on a lot of points with like a lot of the drama that's been going on. Mark still has to deal with his whole Viltrumite heritage at the very end. And then we get somebody at the very last minute and yeah, spoilers, everybody angstrom shows up at the last minute. We could talk about that whole, uh, ending scene that happened and, uh, how that, uh, affects what's going to be coming on. And then, you know what, we have one more episode after this or I believe so. So one more episode. And then, but uh, I mean, as the show taught us, animation is really, really fast. So I figure we'll have a new season pretty quick. I hope so. <laughs> that would be great. But uh, what were your initial thoughts overall about the episode? I thought it was a good episode. Um, I, the weakest of the season so far, but not, but that's not necessarily bad. I mean, one of something has to be the weakest. Mm. Um, I like that we did. It was a little there. They weren't packing as much into it as they have the other episodes. Like the other episodes were like, bam, bam, bam. Like there was a lot in them. This one. <laughs> kind, it's by no means a filler episode, but it was a more breathable episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could breathe a little bit here and there. And then the next thing you know, you hit over the head with something that happens. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't a lot of gore in this one. There was some gore. There was some gore, but. Uh, nonetheless, uh, a lot of it was more the drama and more, uh, like I always say, character development of certain people. And we see that more so within, uh, Donald when he's talking to Rick, uh, we get that a little bit from Rex and his, uh, figuring things out, Mark and Amber and their relationship, where they're at and where they're going, or maybe not going. So we'll get yeah. into that when we talk about that. And on top of that, we have uh, another cute and funny scene from Alan the Alien, but dealing with Viltrumites. Yeah, that was <laughs> impressive. Yeah, I really enjoyed that fact. Uh, it's like we get more Alan Alien, but we see a more invincible Alan Alien. <laughs> He's able to take on uh, Anissa, who's the female Viltrumite, and, uh, you know, get her to bleed. Yeah, I was. <laughs> now we just need uh what 40 50 more of him yeah exactly right uh yeah we got we got to talk to uh peter Cullen, his character and get more of them out of there uh i, I forget what well, they I'm, call I'm thinking, uh, alan uh, i'm thinking oliver's gonna come into play too 
with this? I think Al. Oh uh, yeah, I think Oliver. Well, we, we already see a little bit more of that, and that's a little bit more of Debbie's growth herself too, because she has that nice conversation with Mark, and then she mentions how her life literally revolves around Mark and Oliver at this point. So it's showing her embracing Oliver more and more. So she that is her family. And she yeah. actually says that to the uh, the nanny that's there as well. Especially when she tries to stop <laughs> her uh, work partner who's trying to get a little bit intimate with her and from coming in and everything. Because it's like, uh, I have to show you. I don't want to show you my purple kid. <laughs> <laughs> she did accept a date, though. <clears throat> she did, which is good. It's her moving on. But there was also talk about uh, how Nolan dated her, which was really cool. That was good opening, eye opening. Yeah. It's like instead of flowers, uh, <laughs> he brings her a tree. That and was so funny. Because he's still, she goes basically out of train your father, how to be more human. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's literally because Mark came to her about Amber and his uh, his relationship with Amber at that point. And the l- let's talk about it because it's the first thing we do see and this is where we get to geek out a little bit because we see amber and mark of all things at a comic convention yes <laughs> <laughs> and mark does exactly what some of us always do stand online and get an autograph and she goes we're literally standing on this long a line <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm gonna be st- Standing on one May, in the <laughs> May 4th. <laughs> Alan Tudyk. He's going to be in Philly. I'm not missing him. Yeah. So, but uh, it's for the creator of Seance Dog, which was Philip Schaff. And that's obviously in reference to what we knew from the previous season or previous, well, yeah, previous season. Because the Seance Dog comes to <laughs> Mark to save the planet. And it's not really. And it's uh, and it's the bug people that come for Mark to help them out. And it's their way of trying to convincing him because uh, and it was funny, too, because William at that point is like, oh, my God, am I tripping on something? <laughs> it's a seance dog. <laughs> so, uh, but we, he that, this is where we get into the li- really meta part of the actual episode. Oh, that was that- it was my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> Same here. Because it's literally telling us exactly what had happened during the pandemic and why they had to do what they had to do and uh, how they were able to record. A lot of people think, oh, it's animation and it it shouldn't take that long because literally all you're doing is recording a voice and it's just adding voice. Voice editing is definitely a lot easier. It's a lot of hours of recording sometimes, but it's not podcasting, obviously, because we could do this on a whim and just have it live. But when it comes to the actual animation in itself, it's funny how they would, the way they talk about it. <laughs> it's like uh, the, the joke of like, uh, you know, whenever someone is speaking, they're always turn They always turn the camera away to show the other person. And in this case, Mark's got covering his mouth while the other guy is ta- like <laughs> Schiff is t- Philip Schaff is talking. Yeah. To I mean, they were being blatantly obvious with that. Well, first they edited it. So you only saw, you didn't see, you know, from the nose up, yeah, <laughs> but and then I was like, "Oh, they do do that a lot." Like, yeah, they not all the time, but they they do in this case. But it's it's so funny how they it's like, all right, we're gonna, literally we're just gonna be like, here, this is how the uh, this is how it's made. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> they have fun with it, and they they have a good time with it. Uh, you know, the back of the head and. Like they do a wide shot, <laughs> yeah. So they do all these things that are pretty unique to to animation to show uh, more depth and you know to and just have the voiceover as it is to uh, you know continue the story, which I think is always pretty cool. But yeah, it was I, awesome. I just, it- I, I just love the idea of the whole convention format of were, it. There were people cosplaying as Invincible. Yes. <laughs> that was brilliant like rare. do i look like that 
uh, look over there. And there was a whole like meetup of invincible cosplayers, which was kind of awesome. Yeah. Th- th- honestly, this, this whole episode on reminded me of the Peter Parker, Mary Jane conversations that always happen throughout the comics. Yeah. If you look at Marvel and I'm, I'm referencing, referencing Spider-Man because I love Marvel. I love Spider-Man, but, um, you could tell, that this kind of mimics that same attitude. And in this case, though, uh, Amber can't handle and in, in this particular episode, because there are a couple of times where like she understood in the very beginning where <laughs> she goes, you're going to abandon me at a comic convention. You're going to leave me here. And then he does. And then he has to deal with he... what he has to do with Octo uh, boss and Rex. Yeah. But I mean, he didn't want to leave her there and he was missing the best part. I just Alice. Bleh. Artist Alley is the best part of the comic convention. Artist Alley, uh, for those that you that don't know or not really into comics as much, uh, or even just in general with artists too, because sometimes they'll have regular artists generally there and they do their own version of things. So literally you could get comic book uh, artists out there as well as the writers. And then uh, they will sign the comics. They will do a little bit of art for you. It, you know, yeah, you can commission an artwork. I have a friend who, and I forget exactly what he picks, but he gets like, let's say it's Batman. I know it's not Batman, but yeah, every time he goes to a convention, he goes to an artist and commissions them to draw him a Batman, and he's just got a wall of Batmans drawn different by different people, people which yeah. is like really cool. It's a yeah. really cool idea. I, I think that's a great idea uh, because he's probably just fond of Batman, and yeah. But it's a way to have somebody's interpretation of their idea of Batman. Some people have yeah. different And like ideas. I said, it's not Batman. I forget exactly what he has done. But Even that was, still. Yeah. yeah. Just to give you an idea. And, just, it's, and it's always interesting to go to these things because you, you get to meet the actual artist. You can talk to them about how they approach when they get the storyline. Because sometimes artists will actually dictate the art, like the actual storyline. Without yeah. even having the, the story in front of them. So each panel is very different in comparison to others, but they it dictates what, what's going on and movement in the story itself. Because I've seen it where you had artists do the actual panels and draw out the book itself. And then <laughs> the writer actually has to come up with the story and what the dialogue is within it and have to, to figure out what's going on. Which is very opposite of what happens normally. They're giving like an idea of the story, and uh, I think Jim Byrne, Jim, uh, oh no, Jim, John Byrne, Jim Lee, uh, a whole bunch of others uh, from you know, you know, uh, I'm talking Variety because they worked in DC and Marvel and even Image. So they uh, they they've done that, and it, it's amazing to see that process. But you're able to talk to them and get to know and pick their brain a little bit, and like. Jamie said he could commission them to to draw you something. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. There, and there's also unique, um, sometimes they have their own just random art that's there. And if you're going to meet somebody, like I like to go through Artist Alley first mm-hmm. and see if there's any artwork of that person mm-hmm. that I want to get signed. Like I want to get some, like um con I was at earlier this year was a small con, but uh, the voice of Frylock was there. <laughs> And one of the artists did this really cool Aqua Teen Hunger Force kind of like baby-ish style, like cutesy style. Oh man. <laughs> but I, I loved it. And I liked and I was like, okay, that I'm gonna go, I'm gonna buy that from you and support art and then get it signed. Yeah, I, I actually have something that uh of an old friend of mine, he did milk and cheese. And uh if you guys all remember that, I think that was probably on Aqua Teen hunger force at one point to utilize those characters but uh it was an old uh, comic book run evan dorkin and evan i knew from jim hanley's universe when i lived in staten island and i constantly went to uh jim hanley since the age of 13 all the way up into my 20s evan was uh always the uh consummate <laughs> artist and was always there as an employee and he also did Figments and uh, You All Laugh, where I got the name for the actual network, Pirate Core. So oh. he he wrote a comic called Pirate Core, but th- that was Space Pirates, and they were kind of uh, 
and part and core was spelt with uh, with the s on it was a dollar sign so <laughs> it was them about money and everything but had really nothing to do with the figments i i have the first three issues of both and they're very very hard to come by from what i'm told but i had um i was into teenage mutant ninja turtles around the times so of like you know between the ages of geez 12 till i was 15, 16, I think I got into the first 35 issues of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And uh, I only have issues to, unfortunately, yeah, to the original copies all the way till about 35, 36, I think it was from the original run. And he did a, a I still have it. It's a, uh, he did his idea of what Raphael would look like. Oh, that's cool. So I, I got that, and uh, I still have it to this day, and he signed it. But like Jamie said, you could get these guys to commission anything you want, and so people yeah. do their own uh, rendition of things. It's really cool. Con- cons are, are fun, as we could tell, or they're strange, according to Amber, for some people. But, <laughs> you know, like Mark wanted to live there, and I don't blame him. I have those feelings, too. If it wasn't for con crud... <laughs> It'd be a great place to live. <laughs> that smell from other people. You always come home with some kind of illness. And then knock the on wood. Food. My last, my last uh, one. I didn't come home with anything. Yeah, it, it's it, they're fun to go to. It's a lot of camaraderie within it too, because it's a community. Everybody. So for those of you who have never gone and are interested, just try it out once. And if you don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do it again. For anybody near Philly, Fan Expo Philly is actually having the artist of Invincible this year in May. Yep. For uh, May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And Uh, if you'd uh, like to learn how to use a lightsaber, I will be there to train you. (laughs) So we we find out Mark abandons uh, Amber to help out Rex because he still winds up calling him. (laughs) <laughs> and he's like i'm sorry i love you bye and it's like one of those things he goes on his way and rex is out there on his solo mission trying to take down these squiddy looking dudes with an octo boss and uh as the fight continues it, it's literally rex trying to deal with his own comeback and not being completely normal not that he was normal to begin with. Come on, anybody who has superpowers or anything like that isn't really normal, but he's part robot at this point. And uh, I, I just loved how the Octoboss was talking. It kind of reminded me of like a Hulk slash Yoda way he kept talking. Yeah. I mean, I like that Rex was able to find some, find his confidence. Hmm. But I did not like that he was making fun of the poor dude. <laughs> like, I appreciate you try. I forget exactly what it was. Like I appreciate you trying to learn my language, but uh, you should have done a better job at it. <laughs> like, dude. Yeah, you, you don't didn't talk- learn his language. Yeah, well, you know, you know, talk wise to someone who's got a like a cannon turret on their arm, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, and and then. Rex finds out he's got a useful gift from the robotics that he had. And he still had like this big gun inside his hand. Yeah. <laughs> like, Ooh, lead with that next time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I didn't even know where that came from. <laughs> uh, I just like a lot of the stop splash pages. Very much what they were talking about before in the previous scene during the comic conventions. When uh, when the, the creator of Seance Dog was talking about how they do animation and then this there was a few points where they stop it where it looks like a splash page on a comic during a fight scene yeah. i thought that was pretty cool and that was uh, really cool I, I love how that mark comes and helps him and uh comes to rex's aid and he's able to help him out but i just love the one line that you know rex says to say you can grow teeth back with all the things you've gone through you're awesome <laughs> <laughs> And the fact is, you think about it, it's like, yeah, Mark got the teeth punched out so many times. So many times. <laughs> Dude, that is a useful skill. I've always been jealous of sharks that they can just lose teeth and get new ones. Yeah, I would love that for, you know, well, then uh, it's my my theory and my and my well, not my theory, but my uh, 
that want of anybody like the lizard in Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> He's able to grow an appendage back. You lose an arm or whatever. I always wish that for many of friends who I know that are missing some sort of appendage out there and then come back so that they have something and just grow one. I know. Um, I know people that lost a toe, lost an arm, lost a leg, a hand. You know, I'm not talking Rick Grimes' hand, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Now that we are talking about another Robert Kirkman, you know, title in comic, but uh, yeah, I, I always thought that was pretty cool that uh, Mark is able to like heal fast and grow those teeth back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, we we uh, we get to see a lot. Like I said, we talked about a lot of character growth and a lot of people. And learning and with the drama itself, Black Samson talking to Bulletproof and Bulletproof being very skeptical about the team of the Guardians of the Globe and how Black Samson was saying how this is more of a family. You're still new. You're not understanding this because they were looking at how Rudy was pushing Monster Girl was yeah. what was going on because Rudy as robot he's technically another robot he um he basically wants it so that she doesn't have to regress into a, like a baby at one point because every time she uses her power she gets younger and you know it's the reverse benjamin button or maybe it is like benjamin button no it's benjamin button okay yeah he he's he started he out cares older about her yeah. and he's trying to look out for her yeah, and then she's getting really pissed off at it because they're trying to have her use like a robot version of her monster. And, you know, she couldn't get it or it, it wasn't working. But at the very end, she winds up taking out whatever she had to, which is funny. <laughs> and then uh, her just like being pissed off at Rudy. And it's one of those relationship because you could tell how Rudy does truly care yeah. about her. I don't know if it's Zachary Quinto and they just do something to his voice. And it then, still says it's Zachary Quinto, which I, I'm pretty interested in. So every time I look at the Amazon thing, when I, you could go down on your Apple TV and it tells you. Uh, yeah. Now, anytime you watch actors. on Amazon, however you watch. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I, if you're a podcaster, Amazon is the way if podcast on Amazon shows. It makes it so much easier, <laughs> uh, especially with subtitles and everything else, too. But. But I uh, I got yelled at uh, by a friend of mine. She goes, why are we watching this with subtitles? I'm sorry. I'm so used to having subtitles on. I don't want to watch it. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> we got to turn it off. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it was interesting to have that whole dynamic and then Black Samson literally talking to Bulletproof because it's as if uh, Black Samson is literally talking to us about the dynamics of what's going on within the team itself. Yeah, that was nicely done yeah so but Curry it, Payton did a great job with uh, his little uh, speech and speechifying yeah. to bulletproof and then also we got the well if we're a family then mom and dad are getting a divorce <laughs> yeah that's a good line uh, oh then uh, what does it lead on to I, I think uh, William helping yeah, Rick William with and his Rick, nightmare Rick. Rick has this really, really scary nightmare. Yeah, it's out of a horror movie. You can see body parts and stuff in the back. Yeah. And it's literally him dealing with the fact that he's not human really anymore. And uh, the visions in his dreams are like real and he can't deal with them. And, and you know, William wants to be there for him because he truly does care for him. But it's hard because nobody understands. Unless you've been through a certain thing, like you don't know mm. if you've been through some kind of trauma, unless somebody's been through the same kind of trauma, they just don't get it. Yeah. And then we get Rick on the roof. And then this is after Donald deals with Cecil and Cecil basically sits him down with a whole bunch of files, video files of how many times Donald died. Yeah. Was it 90? 39. 39. 39. Oh, yeah, it's that he's 98% robot now. Yeah. And he asked, Donald asked for his mind to be wiped every time. So he didn't know. Yeah. And this time he is not wanting that. 
And with that, we see the struggle in Donald, but he's also the hair help Rick too at that point on that roof, which is really good. And yeah. and it shows there's more humanity than robot at that point. It is showing the humanity of the person in comparison to what they are. And I think that's literally what that whole scene was based upon. It's just showing that they are more than what they are made up of. And yeah, it was really yeah. beautiful and touching. It was good. And uh, it, it showed a, more of a level of like somebody who's not really a superhero because Donald, if, if you look at it, he's just another agent. And it's he's somebody, an agent, but he keeps having his heroic moments. <laughs> he does. He that does. take his life. <laughs> but in saving other people, too. Yeah. And that's the whole point. It's just that he he's the one that uh, never gets talked about or gets the limelight. Yeah. So I thought it was uh, definitely a great scene between those characters and how Donald was able to approach it and then give his perspective on what happened to him and giving William something to live for rather than take his own life. Rick. Rick. I keep saying William. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <That> dude. <laughs> or or should I say Flash Thompson? Because that's what I think of when I see Rick. <laughs> because he's a big dude and William's always got go over him anyway. Uh we get uh of course Reginald Vell Johnson as Dean Winslow as he has to sit down with Mark and talk about his academic career. <laughs> I mean, even when he's not on another planet how often is he actually able to go to school study yeah do any of that yeah and it's mark's decision to stay in school and continue Try and be on normal. with it yeah i get uh, it yeah we we mentioned reginald vell johnson as dean winslow which is pretty funny because uh he was basically carl winslow at one point <laughs> on tv yeah and, and then uh, of course we all know him from uh die hard who's getting twinkies <laughs> so uh when uh you know bruce willis was shooting from the nakatomi building down to plaza his plaza sorry <laughs> I, I i'm sure ben will yell at me or he's yelling at the uh, podcast now uh yeah so we, we get that whole the de development of mark and his education and what's going on uh through that uh it, it moves on the, sh the the episode and it does move fast like jamie says which is so funny because i think i clocked the episode at around 40 minutes or so and it's yeah pretty fast with everything that they do so they're moving you know i'm wondering it's like if if those of you that are comic readers of invincible where does fit this fit in and how many issues do they really culminate into one episode at this point i'm curious because That'd be interesting. Like, I wonder how many storylines are being moved in or moved around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at this point. And uh, I've seen it. Uh, we, we, we talked about it when Jamie and I spoke about Sam and his companion. There's two big companions and they're huge and thick. They have the same thing for uh, Invincible. But in, uh, I think Invincible, if you look at it, they have three compendiums that are thick. They're like they're yeah. good three to almost four inches thick. And each, and that does a lot of comics, everybody. <laughs> but uh, for you comic readers, I'm pretty sure you, you're following along and either either you're uh, complaining or loving the idea of how move, fast it's moving. Because some of us. There's are, no in between with that. No, there is no in between. It's no, it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll give them a, a, a pass. And it's like, no, nope. <laughs> very much how everybody feels like Walking Dead and how that worked out and how certain characters were changed out for others and things of that nature. But we, we kind of, the, we touched on it earlier, mm -hmm. the Mark and Debbie conversation. Oh, I thought yeah. that was really, really impressive. Like having, you know, speaking as a mom, having your adult child come to you for advice still and confide in you and have like a real conversation with you. And then being able to talk to them like an actual like you're an actual human. You're not just yeah. mom. Like you had a life and you can talk about your life with them. Like that's a goal. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It, it's one of those where you, you could connect with somebody. Well, in your case, it would be somebody that came out of your body and you, you brought up 
And uh, a lot of mothers do want that with their children, you know. And uh, I think my sister-in-law is dealing with that now because her kids are adults, literally, at this point. They're in college. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jamie. Jamie has still... Tiny ones. Tiny (laughs) ones. They're still running around and... Yeah, mom is not an adult. Mom is not a person. Mom is mom. <laughs> mom is mom. Right. Mom now. is here to do whatever you want, whenever you want. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like when you need, I'm here. Yeah. But uh, that that's something to look forward to in in adult life when you have children. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me. I don't have any kids, but I I'm, I see it through other people's eyes <laughs> as being the uncle. I've seen it through uh, at least two kids in their thirties that my sister Lisa had. So my nephew and my niece, and then uh, now my niece is from my brother. So, and then of course I have my friend's kids like Jamie and her, her kids. And then I have uh, a few other friends that have their own kids and they're like, uh, you know, it's funny when their kids are like teenagers and they're coming up to me for, not for advice, but just to talk to me. And I'm like, why don't you talk to your stepfather? <laughs> yeah, it's always easier to talk to another grown up, different grown up. Yeah, I'm not going to talk to you. Why don't you talk to your mom? No, I don't want to talk to mom. She can yell at me. I was like, yeah. oh, really? <laughs> but it, the fact is, is that, yeah, we get Mark coming to his mother for like uh, that parental advice or not even parental. It's, it's literally uh, life advice. And it was really cool to because you read comic books you watch superhero movies you see everything through the superhero's eyes so seeing it through seeing the relationship and what mm. it's like to live with a superhero from the human you know normal humans perspective was really really interesting and then having that little that little moment where she said you know i had to train him to be human that kind of equalized us like that was something important yeah and yeah, that's I- also something that Amber and Mark don't have. No, because Mark tries to protect her at all times. And then Amber's always trying to protect his identity and yeah. everything that was going on. They so have a different relationship. Dynamic. It, yeah. It's a different whole relationship in comparison to what Nolan and Debbie had, or even uh, I think immortal and his wife. There was other, I, I'm, I'm forgetting the other, uh, the heroes that had died. Because yeah. even Debbie had to deal with that. Uh, I remember the speedster guy, his wife, had to deal with that as well. Yeah. At one point, and she was trying to help out. Uh, yeah, it's one of those. Uh, I, we didn't really talk about that too much when we covered season one. Because uh, that kind of like came and went and went so fast, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah, they did touch on those topics a little bit. But, you know, this was more of a serious tone. This, like you said, I enjoyed this episode as well, but it, it's not the greatest, but it hit home when it came to story and plot and characters. Yeah. And it it makes a lot of sense. Now we're just waiting for the ultimate end to this season of where it's going to leave us There's off. There's still so many things. <laughs> I'm really intrigued. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, I've said this before and been wrong, but I don't, they don't wrap up. Maybe the only storyline that gets wrapped up is Amber and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Because, they, yeah. yeah, I hate saying it, it, it ends, but at least it, it, it ends mutually and understandingly between both of them. But it's yeah. so heartbreaking to watch because they want it to work, but they can't make it work. And I don't know how you get back from the end of that date. Well, especially, yeah, when you got uh, Anissa coming and literally choking the crap out of Amber and almost taking her life. And then Mark having to deal with Anissa and then getting to this huge fight because Anissa is saying you have to do your father's duty of taking over this planet. And she's trying to educate him. And uh, what do I have here? Uh, oh, the yeah. When, you know, Anissa says you dare interrupt your education and the one cool thing that Mark does say is, I was never a good student. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just to throw in a quick quote. But, uh, yeah, you could tell that, too, for the fact that he was never there for college. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he he stands his ground. And he's there. And Cecil's in his ear trying to tell her what she wants. Yeah. Just tell her what she wants, Mark. Stop this. 
basically. And so that way she could leave and they don't have to deal with a crazy Viltrumite just as well, strong as Nolan or multiple versions of them coming down to destroy the earth. And then that way everything is in Mark's hands. And then he could say, yeah, I took over. But Mark doesn't want to do that. He wants to be honest to what he does. And it's his moral code is there in a sense of like what he needs to do for earth and stand up for it. So I thought it, it was like, especially when uh, it's so funny how Mark says, well, you say you need these people, you care for these people because you need them. Like, you know, people are a resource because that's what Viltrumites do. They take over a planet planet and they utilize the, the people, those those uh, those planet dwellers and use them for what they had their own need, but also looking at Viltrumites as gods and, you know, oh, which is kind of sucky, <laughs> but uh, they Mark and her go to, which was an awesome battle uh, for a cruise ship and a sea monster at that Dude, point. That Kaiju was awesome. Yeah. I thought it was amazing. And the fact that they were working together, but it still ended up in another battle between Anissa and, and Mark yeah. and his face typically getting punched in. His <laughs> mask is all beat up and broken. The goggles are, are shattered and, I mean, and it's left off at that. And then she kind of just leaves him to go back to. To the uh, the ship to explain. Yeah. Basically, she gave him time. It's like you got enough time now, but. Keep in mind, after that time is gone, we're coming down and we're so it's not going to be just me. It's going to be a ton of us and we're going to just destroy everything and take over this planet. Which kind of sucks. It sucks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> Speaking as a human on planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, wait until that day comes. It's like, I don't want to eat the squiddy things. <laughs> like who knows whatever they eat <laughs> uh well i i thought like i kind of mentioned it too which was a pretty cool one uh the angstrom scene at the very end yeah uh, it was kind of like that he gets a phone call and he thinks it's from debbie and he goes hey mom what's going on and it's no answer it's like and then when are you coming home and it's angstrom and he's got um I, I forgot if he had powers or anything but he had something glowing in the background that was aimed more towards Oliver and Debbie. So basically he's holding them hostage so that he can get Mark there to do whatever the hell he needs to. Yeah. And he's been sneaking up in these episodes. He started out <laughs> as a big part of the beginning of the, of the season. And then we're just, there's little, little nuggets of him. Yeah. They, they just kind of slip it in there every once in a while to, to give us these, uh, yeah, kind of like, like I said to said last week, I'm like the one thing we're missing, the Mahler twins. And I, I missed that. You know, we left off where they kind of went off in a distance. And that was it. And I was like, when are they coming back? Yeah, I like them. <laughs> but uh, Angstrom was a big to-do in the very beginning of the season. And we only got certain moments with Angstrom in it. And uh, it took how long for us to get the second half to get to where we are now. And obviously, with all the meta that we got in the very beginning, which explains all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> that uh, ending or ending credit scene when Alan Alien goes against it, which is amazing. Oh, my God, that was so good. I love it. The fact that it's like she's shocked that a Unopen is that strong. You're not that strong. You people are never that strong. And then he's taking it left and right, and he dishes it out back at her. And she's bleeding. And then she thinks she has the upper hand. And then Alan, you can see Alan, he kind of winks, even though he's got one eye. <laughs> he plays kind of dead or unconscious. Yeah. And it's like you could say that it's like, okay, he's doing this purposely to get in there. And well, uh, I thought it was cool. Yeah, between Alan and the the possible heroes that we find in the books, like there's a chance against the Viltrumites. We've just got to get the right crew together. Correct. The Guardians are not it. <laughs> <laughs> no they're a mess <laughs> yeah. mark mark is not it well mark is a, a good start but to help but i don't think he's there to lead i and would I, not be can, surprised yeah. if nolan comes back in some way 
Well, we've got the guy that made the Marsh Alan powerful. Like if he could do that to Alan, who else can he do that to? And what else do we have going on out there? Well, uh, Immortal is just as strong of anything of any of all the superheroes that we have from the Guardians of the Globe. It's just that he's a broken man at this point. Yeah, that's a problem. And that's what's so sad is somebody is so, I'm not saying it as a joke, but invincible himself is vulnerable to that point where he can't even get it together because he emotionally cannot get it together. And he doesn't want to lose more people because of what had happened when Rex and the girls together went against the Serpent Society. And the you know they those they're dead, and yeah. uh, he took it very very hard, and I feel bad for him. But yeah, it, it's the like I said the it, the Guardians of the Globe are broken Avengers. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I think at this point, yeah, they, something's got to give. They need an overhaul <laughs> or a team building weekend or something i don't know what yeah yeah uh uh what, like they do in businesses they do those little retreats yeah <laughs> with the trust falls and the whatnot <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i think rudy was trying to do that with monster girl but she did was not having it <clears throat> i was waiting for uh her to just monster out and just smack him down but i don't think that'll ever happen but uh, that that was it for me. My notes and my thoughts. The only thing I have is like one quote. <laughs> okay. I have uh, you have one uh, one or two quotes. I just have one. All right, go for it. Uh, it's from Rex in the very beginning when him and Mark are going against the Octoboss and the Squid Boys, <laughs> as I call them. He goes, "Take care of those other guys," as I take care of Davy Jones over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that one too. That was a good one. <laughs> Yeah, so that's all I got out of that. I oh. it, it, it the it wasn't very much quotable this episode, but it, it's got its moments and in, in certain scenes that you you pick up yeah. and you do enjoy. Uh, uh, I'm not saying it was a bad episode, everybody. No. I think it's just one of those that was just really good in the series itself and just moved along the story and the plot points of what we needed, especially for Mark. Yeah, I have um, Donald when he was talking with Rick. Was, we're not our bodies. We're the decisions we make, the lives we change, the people we love or who love us. Like I thought that was a really good. Yeah. Uh, even if you're not, you know, half robot, I think that's a good thought. It's really about Donald and Rick and how they're going through their, like how they're de- dealing with their healing humanity of being a robot. But it's kind of like that whole feeling of depression. Yeah. And it's like, we're not who we are based upon this. It's who we are deep down and what people like about you do not do this. And yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought it was done very well. And then my last one was funnier was back at the beginning at the con. Um, Amber's like, you can't buy everything. Mark Grayson and Mark just runs <laughs> off going, watch me. <laughs> which uh, i've been there <laughs> <laughs> i i've i known a lot of people that did the same thing too <laughs> including myself where it's like oh, you get, yeah. you're like i can't afford it. i want this <laughs> and then you walk yeah. over and you're like why did i buy this like three months later <laughs> i have so much artwork from cons not even talking like stuff that i got signed and stuff that you know photo yeah. ops and whatever like i have actual just artwork I've gotten from artists. Mm -hmm. I have so much of it. That's just piled up because I haven't gotten frames or hung it on the wall or I've gotten a frame. I haven't hung it. Like this has been living next to me for almost a year now. Yeah, I know. I think it was there when you got it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, trust me. I have think I have a bin full of Kirk Manley's art somewhere with the, (laughs) the laminate covers and everything. Uh, I think I have, Jason and Karen's uh <laughs> their their official Z head Patreon oh, poster. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't have well, the funds for that when that came up. 
Oh, I got that in the very beginning when you, you joined the Patreon when you first came out. And I got that in the package. I was like, oh, there we go. So. Yeah, like, I have this. Oh, it sits. Lost Boys, yep. Yep. It needs a better frame before these come <laughs> off, but it just sits behind my monitor. <laughs> She's got a Lost Boys poster signed by uh, Kiefer Sutherland and who else? Kiefer, Kiefer was the big one. Um, I got um, we got the accent to each other. Winter. winter. Alex Winter. Yeah. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland got Dwayne <laughs> and then um, Jason Pastine. Jason Patrick. Yeah. Patrick, that's it. <laughs> Jason Patrick. Pastine? Then I got to decide. <laughs> then I got to decide if I want to meet Corey Feld, pay for Corey Feldman's autograph again because I got him once already. Oh, I got once. Uh, I have something from him too. I think I got a Lost Boys eight by ten signed by him years ago when I went to Chiller. Yeah, I do. Uh, I have Friday yeah. the Thirteenth is my first love, so he signed my Friday the Thirteenth book. <laughs> but now I got to decide if I want to add him to the Lost Boys poster or if it's okay the way it is. <laughs> well, he'll, uh, honestly, uh, at any convention, he'll sign anything as long as you pay him. Oh yeah, and, as long. Well, yeah. and you don't tell him his music sucks. <laughs> oh, he was trying to pawn that off on oh, me, God. and yeah, his I, wife at the time, one of his angels. <laughs> was there talking up a show and I had to pretend that I liked his music and I was going to go. Oh God. Spoiler, no. I didn't go. <laughs> I, 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 I attend like monster mania and, and chiller and everything. And of course there's a typical Jersey resident that we all know who goes there and frequents them or crashes them himself. And his name is Scott Schwartz. We all know Schwartz from a Christmas story. He played flick. He was also in the toy story. Uh no the the toy sorry the toy the toy the, R- yeah Richard different Fire movie and different Kid, movie and Kidco if you all remember that so that's all that Schwartz's claim to fame was throughout that those years of being a child actor so when I met Corey Feldman and at the time my boss and my friend uh, Ralph and I Ralph's like oh maybe we get a deal get a few of these and they'll cut the price down I'm like no they no they don't do that. that. But Schwartz was pushing the whole, hey, Mark, you should get this. And I'm like, one, Scott, get away from me. Two, I don't want <laughs> his music. It, I didn't say it sucked. It but does, he was, though. It, it, he was playing the CD. And mm-hmm. Schwartz was kissing Corey's butt at the time. Because that's that, what you have to do to Corey. And during that time. Schwartz wasn't a big thing and yeah, they weren't doing a Christmas story uh go backs or anything. Now Schwartz will get like, oh, we're gonna have a have a Christmas story uh convention reunion. Yeah. So now Schwartz is more prevalent because they just put out the the sequel to a Christmas story that uh that the kid who played Ralphie or the guy who played Ralphie did recently yeah. in this past year or two. But to me, I was just like, stop pawning that stuff off me. I don't want that. No, I, I, I was like, I, and I knew, I, and this is my opinion, everybody. It's not everybody's opinion, but the way I feel about Corey Feldman, he was a great actor. It's a kid actor. There was a lot of stuff going on between him and uh, Corey Haim. Yeah, they had, they kids. had it rough. They didn't have an easy time. They in didn't Hollywood. have an easy time, but uh, they, it's like we lost Corey Haim and we got stuck with Feldman and Feldman is crazy pants city in my opinion. Is, in my opinion. Yeah. But I mean that's my valid opinion. reasons for being crazy pants city, but he is crazy pants city. Yeah. And the way he the way he treats the angels, he should know better. Oh yeah. Because yeah. of how he was treated. He should know better than yeah, he, it's, the, it's, but it's, uh, I will give him he does one thing that I always enjoy when I go to a con and I see the autograph prices and it's you know, mm. 25 bucks more if you don't have your name put on it because oh, then yeah. it's f- for resale. And I I kind of like it when they discourage the resellers. They do, but there's a way around there's it. Because there's nothing worse than standing online line and then the person in front of you whips out like 20 pop figures and you're like... <laughs> 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 I had somebody show me this. They went to go see Christina Ricci at a Monster Mania 
and they were showing me their the stuff. It was a it was a woman. I don't know if she was trying to pick me up or what, but she was young, she was pretty. But she goes, Oh, I was just online with Christina Ricci, and, and I'm like counting how many, and I know the cost. Because I was just yeah. talking to Sean Clark, 120 bucks a pop. Yep. She had like 20. She's either a reseller or she's a like there's people there's people who either as a side gig or as their main gig, they go to these cons and they get autographs for other people. Yeah. And which I'm like, it, if, great if you can do it. I just am personally of the I personally don't need an autograph of somebody if I haven't met them. Mm hmm. But that I mean, I know other people like having autographs. My cousin used to write like way back in the 80s and early 90s. He used to, he used to write to people to, to get have the them, autographs, to get the autographs come back. Yeah. And he has this whole book of all these autographs of people he hand wrote letters to. Like, <laughs> so I really I mean, love your stuff. That's like the coop. Oh, there was actually a movie I recently watched, which makes me laugh. Reminds me of that. It's the uh, Kristen Bell's in it and somebody else. And they. <laughs> And it was based on a true story. They literally were writing in like abrasive letters to like all these serial companies, anything that would you get a coupon for. So she was getting all these massive coupons for free stuff. And then she made it a market scheme. I mean, it's just so funny. But there are those people, like you said, that they'll yeah. go out there and they'll literally just make it their job. Or some people are just compulsive buyers or just love that. Yeah. I can't say that I wasn't guilty of that when Huru Nakajima or Kempichiro Satsuma was at a con and I got a lot of autographs from them. But it's hard to get when you got Japanese suit actors for Godzilla films coming to the States and they're variably there, especially yeah. them at that age. Now, both Haru and Kempichiro are dead. and We only have one remaining Godzilla suit actor. So, wow. yeah. And, uh, Kitagawa is the only one that's left, and it, it's sad, but uh, G-Con is still prevalent, and it's great in Chicago and in Japan. But uh, I I have a, just a book dedicated of autographs from every Toho person I've met. And that's Godzilla. cool. So I, I dedicate that book to that, but I was surprised. I was like, I actually gave one of my autographs because my sister wanted one. I was like, yeah, you want this one? I got more than enough of this uh -huh. so she handed it back to you. i don't want this anymore i was like okay thank you i take it back <laughs> but uh the thing was is that it, it's like a lot of people don't i did that for the fact that you can't find that actor anymore they can't personalize it if they're they're right foreign too by the way especially when they write it in japanese and you you don't even know it's like oh crazy american i'm gonna say <laughs> fuck off <laughs> in japanese <laughs> that's fine I'm okay with it. You know, you have the, uh, the, you know, those are the symbols for soup on your back. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Somebody had that in the movie. It was like, no, that's, that's the, that's the symbol. Oh, it was that big bang theory. Why do you have oh, yeah. soup written on your back or something? She goes, no, it's not. It says love. He goes, no, that's a soup. <laughs> or in, uh, in Colossal, when she went to a tattoo person that does uh, North uh, Korean. <laughs> and she had to get words and then they she was able to get the words that she needed to write out yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was funny but uh he told them a convoluted story but anyhow we digress uh <laughs> uh we are looking forward to the next episode of invincible it will be the last for this season which is episode eight uh so listen to us when that does come out i'm hoping to get these episodes out a little bit sooner uh there was a bit of an issue obviously with work and everything for me so I edited it and got it up on literally on the it's April fools. So it's April 1st. I got it up literally this morning. I, I went up by the time I actually uploaded and released it, it was this morning, but we're recording tonight for this particular episode, which came out on Thursday. Uh, but we will be more prevalent. Uh, we still have to do when Steve gets back, he and I are going to cover the first four episodes, I believe of X-Men or just do an overall uh, look at what we liked about the episodes, where they're going with the story points and the plots. Uh, and then obviously Echo will do our overall synopsis of that. Uh, look forward to on Adrenaline Cinema for an uh, interview with Vampire with Lara, Daniel, Rima, and myself. 
but uh, that that's just to keep your price of what's going on. But uh, with that in the news, uh, obviously uh, a lot. There's been a few things have been going on. We, we unfortunately lost a, a person, not comic book related, but Louis Gossett Jr. Yeah, it's a yeah, bummer. That that was a bummer. But for uh, anything comic book related or uh, superhero show related, uh, we did lose Chance Perdomo of uh, Gen V. And uh, yeah, he died in a motorcycle accident, unfortunately. So they had to halt filming for Gen V yeah, and the boys. Really sad. And yeah. the boys, because they're integrated. They were trying to integrate them into the boys series. So uh, he was also on uh, Sabrina at one point, too. So he, he's been known. He was very young. I think he was like 27. And it, it's sad. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I think it's, uh, wise that they halted production and they're going to take their time. So we're not going to be getting the boys or Gen V anytime soon, ladies and which gentlemen. is fair, which is fair. It makes sense. It's really sad though, that, uh, that all happened, but, um, other than that, uh, well, uh, we're looking forward to, apparently we're going to get a Deadpool Wolverine trailer probably in July, they're saying. So look forward to that coming up. That's but exciting. M- more and more leaks are coming out. Uh, Ghostbusters, uh, what was it called? Frozen Kingdom? Frozen Kingdom or Frozen Empire, or I don't know. Frozen something. Yeah, Frozen something. You saw it though, right, Jamie? Yeah, I liked it. Okay, I saw it as well i really enjoyed it uh in comparison to uh the last one that came out it was okay yeah still, it, still better than the second ghostbusters everybody <laughs> i like that one too uh it, the the second one was kind of goofy they lost money on it but uh i i i listened to when i watched something on youtube about uh the what they were trying to do over the years for a third Ghostbusters, and I could see what they were trying to do. But uh, I thought this was okay. It was pretty good. I liked the story. It was a bit long, in my opinion. And yeah, yeah I mean, I can see why people who didn't like it didn't like it. But <laughs> I believe if you're honestly a fan of Ghostbusters of the franchise, that you would like it. Yeah. If you're not a fan, I don't think it's worth. See, <laughs> yeah, uh, you could wait for it for streaming. I'm yeah. pretty sure eventually it'll be out there. If you're looking for a proton pack that they sell at AMC theaters, they are sold out, yes. And on top of that, as well as the um, well, you got yours, yes, I got a uh, the ghost trap. Oh, that's Popcorn so cool, holder. That's so cool. So uh, I was stuck in a queue for a while and I accidentally hit twice, but I had two per in each queue. So I have four. I will buy one off of you. (laughs) And we were talking about this last week. Uh, Apparently, uh, a friend Megan was waiting online. They missed out by two people, but apparently her husband, Forrest, bought one on eBay. Yay, Forrest. So, so he came through and she goes, I don't need one. Sell it. I was like, okay. So I have, uh, I'm only holding on to one. I'm not going <laughs> to. It's like. No, I'll, buy, I'll buy one of your extras off you. They're yeah, pretty cool. They're pretty cool. So uh, I I have those, but they're very hard to come by. Very much like the uh, Dune popcorn bucket, which everybody is so. Liked um, for a different reason. Yeah. Infatuated over due to sexual <laughs> innuendos. And uh, yeah. <laughs> the, that that's what's out that's current right now uh i do recommend going to ghostbusters like jamie does if you're a fan if you're not then uh i would wait and if you're interested in just barely just watch it on streaming when it does come out everything's going to be coming out on streaming soon uh godzilla minus one uh good news too about the new godzilla x kong which i have not seen rob has seen it and rob's in the middle of moving <laughs> not podcasting but uh, he he really did enjoy Godzilla X Kong, which is surprising from it, from me. My boyfriend went and gave blood today and got a t shirt for the movie. Oh, awesome! <laughs> uh, was it his size at least? Or yeah, oh, yeah, okay. you can get um, some 
bonus they're running this month for so if you can go give blood if you want a cool free t-shirt <laughs> all you gotta do is give blood and save a life for three i think you can save three lives with one donation yeah so do so go out yeah. there and donate and uh other than that that's it for me for comic news i didn't want to really flood everything uh podcast recommendations well uh we always tell everybody check out podcastica.com uh, yes. right, currently uh, into the uh, the Buffy first uh, still slang podcast is out there. Check it out with Penny, uh, Penny and Kara. Uh, they just did Heather's. I think they're doing another one in between seasons, which is pretty cool. But uh, they did Heather's with Jason <laughs> on there, which is so funny because he's never seen uh, Heather's. I can't believe he hadn't seen Heather's before. <laughs> And uh, Jason is and Lucy are still continuing their stuff with uh, the the ones that live. They are knocking it out of the park. Yeah. The show is brand, the show is fantastic. Yeah, I'm gonna. If we wrap uh, this up soon, maybe I'll go watch that last episode. Yeah, I'm not gonna give. Bed. I'm not gonna give away or spoil anything. But if you haven't seen it, check out the last episode. You yeah. won't regret it if you've watched Walking Dead all these years, and you'll feel better about yourself at the end. That's all I'm saying. That's not a giveaway or anything. Uh, it, it to me, it's like let's wrap things up a little bit, and that's how I felt. It and it also leaves you off going, "What else could happen?" So yeah, that's good. <laughs> so it, it's one of those of it makes you think. But uh, yeah, check out podcastica.com. Check the, all that all that out. Uh, Strange indeed is. Uh, I think they're doing stuff. I don't know if Freeman and Pake are still on a break. Uh, and then Daphne and Paik on uh, Run for Your Lives. I haven't been keeping up on theirs. I uh, I'm way behind on a lot of podcasts. Same here. Uh, it's like yeah, think about it. I was behind on editing, so <laughs> like think about me listening. Yes. So, so uh, I've been keeping up with Wilhelm and uh, the Wilhelm Podcastica uh, revisited podcast for uh, <laughs> Ted Lasso. So I've been listening to that. But, um. Check that out. Penny and Greg are doing one for the show Extraordinary. Oh, yes. And that's actually a show I have to catch up on, too. I am halfway through the season. Yeah, it's so funny. Oh, my God. That show is so funny. So if you want to watch anything that has superhero people in it, but it's kind of goofy and British, watch it. Yeah, it's so funny. And then check out uh, Penny and Greg on Podcastica, too. Yeah, they're also doing a great job. All right. Uh well, honestly, we didn't get any feedback because I didn't put anything down for this one for <laughs> feedback. So that's I screwed myself. But then again, you know what? You have options to always send in feedback at any given time, and with that, you can do so by just going to our Facebook group, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels, and that's it. Uh, just write anything in Messenger or just put a comment down for anything that we have. We'll read it. We'll state it on the actual podcast. Uh, we also have an email. All you have to do is email us directly at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two is spelled out to pixels, the number one at gmail.com. We'll read anything you type out, or if you want, you just could record yourself and uh, we'll play it as you know, just put it in as an attachment. I'll play it on the, uh, the podcast. You can be part of the podcast, or if you want to ever be on the podcast too, all you have to do is just contact us and have fun. Yep. Uh, we could be heard on, well, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. Uh, there are ratings or reviews there. So if you could do so, that would be greatly appreciated. Give us five stars. Actually, if you could type out one, oh, it'd be so greatly appreciated. And thank you. Five stars is always recommended, but <laughs> just be honest yeah. about it. So uh, thank you very Follow much ahead of time. Follow your heart. Uh, to let you know, too, uh, apparently Google Podcast is no longer a thing anymore. So yeah. so those of you who are lis- were listening uh, and don't know where to go to get us and you're listening to on maybe perhaps right now on YouTube, because we have a YouTube uh, Pounds to Pixels podcast page, uh, you know, subscribe, like and ring the bell uh, and tell a friend, obviously, too. So it's literally just a podcast on that. But uh, for you that are listening now and don't have that ability and we're listening to on Google Podcasts, 
Google Podcast is done just like Stitcher was. So a lot of them are going away, but the, the mainstays are usually Spotify and Apple Podcasts right now. But um, yeah, and then just also mention a friend whenever you can. So uh, I've already mentioned where you could hear me elsewhere in Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, possibly Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. Rob is still uh, changing up the format and when he finishes moving come the end of May, probably he'll be back and ready to go in rare form with uh, a new idea and how we'll, we'll be podcasting on that. So you could hear me there if you want. Uh, and uh, that's about it for me. Uh, Jamie, you could hear me and her. We were talking about recently doing a Sandman cast again when that comes back. I'm so excited for it to come back. So uh, I have to talk to Jason. I don't know. He, I brought it up to him and he goes, wait, uh, you don't have to do it for podcast. Good. I'm like, oh, I would like to, but I'll throw it out, offer it to him, but we could definitely leave it here if need be too. It could be a dual yeah. podcast. Do cross platform thing too. Cross whatever platform. We want. Yeah. If we wanted to. So you could hear Jamie and I there on uh, Sam and cast. When we do that here, possibly too, which is going to be interesting. <laughs> It'll be fun. And uh, we'll continue our adventures on with Sandman. Uh, you could hear Jamie on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. She was in Watched It in the 80s. Uh, were you ever on Wilhelm? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I did the Halloween episodes except 2023 because he didn't have one. Um, and then you and I did a Christmas, the very first Christmas episode with him. That is so we true. found the softer side of Mark. <laughs> still, I, I think that is still the favorite podcast I've ever done. So if, yeah, <laughs> if you want to go into the archives of the Wilhelm podcast, yeah. I think the 2022 Christmas special is maybe is probably the favorite podcast I've ever done. It's funny. It's yeah, so much fun. Everybody's like, Mark's a softy. He likes romance <laughs> comedy. What's up with this? <laughs> now, if you listen to Kristen and Ben when they're talking about uh, Ted Lasso, Kristen hates romance comedies or anything rom oh, yeah. <laughs> She's all about Fast and Curious uh, or The Furious, sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just her personality and what she likes. Uh, I was a gearhead too. I. I mean, yeah, think about it, adrenaline cinema. I liked everything action. All right. So with that, uh, yeah, that, that's where you could check us out and hear us. But uh, for what we're doing here, I just want to thank everybody for listening. Uh, it's always fun to do these podcasts. And that's a wrap pretty much on Invincible Season 2, Episode 7. So thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Jamie. And this was Panels to Pixels Podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.